last couple of years, but there were trade rumors even last season about Walker, who now faces free agency next summer. So in your opinion, as we sit here right now, does he finish out the year with Charlotte? Is he there next year? Well, I'm going to be a straight shooter. Hey, if you guys, if he's in it for the long haul, why is he not extended right now before training camp? You know what I mean? If he, why I'm waiting Get, get him a free agency. He's been an all-star last two years. I think he's uh, his work ethic is great. He's a leader. He's vocal. I had the opportunity to actually play against him a, a lot uh, throughout, you know, the, during a later year of my career. And I just saw, you know, he's tough as nails. He's a guy that you can put a franchise on their back and lead the way. But with all the moves they made this offseason, he could be on the trade block. Yeah, you know, it's going to be tough because I, I, I don't know that they necessarily want to trade him. But I think because they've made so many bad moves mm -hmm. and signed some bad contracts. Cap situation is not um, good. It, it puts them in a, in a bit of a pickle because I don't know that they have a lot of assets that are tradable. Uh, you you got to hope that something happens positively this year with the development of Malik Monk. Uh, does Frank Kaminsky, can he take another step? Will we ever see anything more out of Michael Kidd Gilchrist? Cody uh, Zeller. Cody Healthy Zeller. This year, hopefully. Uh, Nicholas Wood. Batum, who Nicholas they gave Batum. a boatload of money. Uh, can he somehow live up to that contract? So I think when you look at the totality of all the things they've done, it's put them in a situation where they now may have to part ways with their best player smack dab in the middle of his prime in order to have a chance to not rebuild, to start a rebuild. Right. You know, to start to build, I should say, because right now, man, they, they have a lot of concerns. I, I don't look at this as being an overly talented roster, uh, one that's going to be in a position to contend in that Eastern Conference in the near term. Well, believe it or not, Kemba Walker is their sixth highest paid player on that roster. Number one on that list is Batum, who is in the third year of a five-year, $120 million deal. And not to pick on him, he's a good player, but hasn't necessarily been that kind of a player for the Hornets. What do they need out of Batum if this is going to be a team that surprises folks and reaches the playoffs? I think uh, what they they need is a sense of urgency from Batum. I think uh, once he got the, 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 the big contract, it was almost like he went on cruise control. It would, but then you kind of want, look at his body of work that he did in Portland. I mean, he was the same player. You know, he had good players around him, but he fit in. He was the right piece of the, the intangible piece, the X factor piece that he didn't really have any pressure to score the ball. If he scored 20, it was a plus. If he scored 10, it was a plus. But now with that bag in Charlotte, excuse me, in, uh, new, um, in Charlotte, he has to come with it, and he ain't he ain't came with it yet. Well, the, the problem is, I, I, I think he is what he is. It's just you paid him to be something else. Right. You know, you paid him to be an all-star caliber player, and I don't know that that's the makeup of him from a talent standpoint. He's a really good player. He's a complimentary player. Uh, but you need to have two guys who are, in essence, stars or superstars for him to play with mm -hmm. in order to really, I think, get the most out of what he brings to the table. You know, he's never averaged more than 14 points a game. It's right. not like he's going to be a big-time scorer. Right. You know, he's going to get you three, four rebounds. He's going to get four or five assists. He's going to play solid basketball. Right. But he's not going to – you're not going to win because of him. You can win with him, but you're not going to win because of him, and that's part of their problem. They don't have enough guys you win because of. They right. got one in Kimball Walker. Yeah. And it, it's going to be interesting to see what direction – they go in moving forward when you look at that roster. Well, Batum has always been sort of a Swiss Army knife mm -hmm. kind of guy, even though he's French. Um, but they're, <laughs> they're second leading returning scorer at this point with Dwight Howard no longer on the roster is Jeremy Lamb, believe it or not, yeah. under 13 points a game. But scoring may not be Batum's primary skill, but will they need more scoring out of him this, this year? I, I, yeah, with the roster makeup. And I, I think also they're hoping that they can get a, a big jump from Malik Monk. I, I do think that if that guy ends up panning out, I think now it changes everything for them because they do need somebody to compliment Kemba in that backcourt that can be dynamic, mm -hmm. that can go out and get 30 in a game. We don't know if that is where... It, the ceiling is for Malik Monk right now. But we also know when you look at their roster, for the most part, he's the only guy that I could even look at and think could get there. Everybody else has kind of established who they are and where they're going to be. Kaminsky can get a little bit better as well. But he's the one guy that is, to me, he's kind of like the X factor because we don't know. Can he get to another level? Can he, you know, get to a point where we're starting to look at him the way we look at Bradley Bill? We don't know that about him yet. 
And I think we're going to find out this season. And he was drafted for scoring. Yes. His scoring potential in the NBA. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a fan of Malik Monk. I, I feel like he should not even slip to 10. Uh, I think he's right now in that J.R. Smith uh, caliber type of player. Instant offense off the bench. You could start him. You could bring him off the bench, either or. I still think he's unproven to do it on a consistent basis. Uh, but I think he'll have the opportunity this year. Uh, Michael Jordan loves him a lot. Uh, Mitch Kupchak, you know, it, it wasn't his draft, but uh, he'll, he'll, he's willing to work with uh, other draft, draft picks. And I think the great problem that the uh, Hornets have is basically their second unit is a starting unit. Willie Heron Gomez, Frank Kaminsky, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, Malik Monk, Tony Parker that, started, uh, that was a starter as a Hall of Famer coming off the bench. So they have great problems and they're deep, but we just don't know what we're going to get out of them. I'm hearing more questions than answers. At yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, we've got a lot more, more questions as well to get to on the Hornets on the other side. We'll hear from Kemba on what's ahead this season. Kemba, you betcha. Kemba's feeling it big time. Kemba skating through the defense and scored. Look at Kemba Walker. Oh, oh yeah. Entry pass denied by Kemba. Oh, Kemba. Gorgeous play from Kemba Walker. Yeah. New to the roster mix in addition to Tony Parker, Bismack Biombo is part of a three-team summer deal. And Miles Bridges, the explosive 12th overall pick out of Michigan State. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on Bridges, how he projects as a pro? We know he can dunk yeah. <laughs> really, really well. I think there are questions about what else he can do and where he fits in in the NBA. Yeah, can he become, can that three, that wing position become his natural position? Can, can he be a perimeter player? Uh, I, I think he showed glimpses with the jump shot, his ability to get it off the bounce. Can he defend that position? I mean, he's going to also, you know, we talked about Malik Monk earlier, but, you know, he's another guy that if he's in the rotation, that's a positive sign. Like, right? because remember, in a lot of ways, Malik Monk wasn't in the rotation last year. So if you're going to get a lottery pick, you want him to at least be in the rotation. That gives you a chance. And, and I think if he shows enough in training camp and finds himself in that position, that's a positive for this organization. I think just being a lottery pick, you never want to go to an organization where you're the third option off the bench behind Batum, behind Michael Kidd Gilchrist, who are already proven. So, therefore, right now, his antennas are up where he's going to have to work, maybe have to play some time at the four. And the way the league is going, I could see him surviving at the four, playing some stretch four at times. But like you said, you are who you can guard. So if he to show signs of defensive, of playing defense on the perimeter and down low, he'll find and earn some minutes out there on the floor. And one thing to mention about him, too, the advantage he has as a young player, when I go in and I see Nicholas Platoon and I see Michael Kidd Gilchrist, yeah, they're really good players. But ain't, they ain't now one of them ever got 20 a night in the game. Yeah. Like, if I can go in and score that position consistently, I'm going to have a chance to get sure. minutes. So he's thinking that way or should be as a young player who's, you know, been a, he's been a top-tier guy his entire life, and if he has that confidence, he's going to have a chance. Well, for the time being, the scoring begins with Kemba Walker. He recently spoke with Roe Parrish about the season ahead. We have a brand-new teammate in Tony Parker who spent years in San Antonio. How's the interaction been between you so far, and, and what are you looking forward to learning from him this season? Uh, the interaction has been... It's been A1, man. We we get along really well. You know, we, we actually talk a lot. Um, as far as me learning from him, I mean, anything he has to offer. Um, for the most part, I want to. I think I want to learn, you know, just how he how he manages to be really efficient, you know, with his in-between game, you know, you know, finishing at the basket and, you know, his little runners and flows and things of that nature. So I think I'm going to be picking his brain on that a lot. Now, you talked about the runners, of course. Those are legendary. He did that when he was in San Antonio winning yeah. championships. James Borrego also comes over, who's the new head coach. What has he established so far as far as the team's new identity? Um, no, I think for the most part, he established um, a very healthy, uh, talkative, 
culture. You know, we he wants us to interact more, um, you know, communicate more, which is, of course, important in, in the game of basketball. You know, you have to be, you know, you have to communicate with your teammates. And, you know, I think that's something that he really established early. And um, I'm really excited about that. I think last year that's what we lacked. You know, we didn't communicate enough. So this year, I think a lot of the focus is going to be on our communication and our camaraderie. So being a winner, you're going to have to have definite contributions. Now, Miles Bridges, that's your lottery pick. He comes in. He was impressive in summer league. What have you seen from him so far that impresses you, and do you think he'll be able to contribute as a rookie? I think so. I think so. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. Um, the thing that impresses me the most is, is his work ethic. Um, you know, every time I come to the gym, you know, he's, he's here. He's, he's getting his work, especially for a young guy. You know what I mean? Um, and another thing is, you know, when you when you when you tell him something, you know, he he immediately tries to tries to do it, tries to add it to his game, and I think that's really impressive. Um, you know, you need young guys who who wants to learn, who wants to sew things up, who wants to learn from older guys, and um, he's one of those young guys, and um, that's that's what's really impressive about him. So we see that LeBron has gone west. It appears to everybody that the Eastern Conference is wide open. What is it going to take for the Hornets to get back into that top eight and make the playoffs? Yeah, we got to be consistent. We got to be consistent, man. Every night, you know, we, we, we have to know who we are. Um, if we're losing, you know, we have to remain the same. Um, if we're winning, we have to remain the same. And I think... I think that's where that's where TP comes in this year for us. Um, you know his leadership. You know, he's the vet. He's the oldest guy on our team, and he he knows what it takes to to win in this league. And you no, know, we're gonna be leaning on that man a lot. So, you now I'm looking forward to to learning from him and you know see what he has to offer to our team. So you have a new coach, a new general manager. Is there going to be a new contract on the horizon for Kimba Clutch? Is he going to be staying in the Queen City? What's going on? I hope so. I hope so. Um, I think so as well. So I don't know yet, but you know, gonna go through this season. I'm gonna I'm gonna play my butt off just like I just like I do each and every night. And um, you know, whenever the time comes, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get it right. That is the question, isn't it? Coming up, what the Hornets were up to this summer, including trick shots from Jay Triano. Nice. That's nice. That's Canada deep. That's what that is. Plus, we'll hear from the starters when we come back.